Coming up on the Joy Behar Show, the miracle of the mine. After being trapped for over two months, how will the Chilean miners recover from their ordeal and cope with a swarm of global media? Then, voters ditch the sitch, kicking the situation off Dancing with the Stars. But was he the right choice? Plus, rock icon Rick Springfield talks about the highs and lows of creating smash 80s hits like Jesse's Girl and being TV's original hot doctor. That and more starting right now. Rich Springfield tells me how rock and roll saved his life. Cause she's watching him with those eyes. And she's loving him with that body. I just know it. And he's holding her in his arms late, late at night. You know I wish that I had just his girl. Springfield's 1981 smash hit, Jesse's Girl, was the anthem for a generation of teens and helped launch the Grammy-winning singer into America's hearts. He was also TV's original hot doc on ABC's General Hospital. His memoir, Late Late at Night, reveals the highs and lows of fame and his lifelong battle with depression. With me now is Rick Springfield. Welcome to the show, Rick. Thanks. You're a rock star, a soap star, and quite, quite a uh, ladies' man, according to this book. Oh, a lot was... of sex in the book. How many women are we talking about? On a scale of one to Warren Beatty. Well, <laughs> I don't know how many Warren Beatty's had. But oh, I've... a lot, a lot. I've, a lot. I've, I've, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. But yeah. yet you're still mar you're married for 25 years. Yes, to the not, same... because I'm married to the, to the right, you know, I, I mean, she, I, I exist by her good graces. She's, she's an amazing woman. She's not, she didn't... Uh, you know, sweep things under the rug and say, oh, we won't talk about that. She met the issues head on with me and we, you know, went to therapy and we you actually a couple of times thought, okay, let's, let, let's break up. And, but we, uh, we, we, we know that we're better together than we are apart. And that's, that's the heart of it. That's nice. What does she do? Is she in the biz? Uh, she runs the house and has always run the house. She and she is a rock and ever, she is, I mean, she's, not a professional woman, but uh, has all these doctors, fe uh, women doctors and women lawyers that like flock around her because she has this thing. She's a mover and a shaker. Absolutely. And, mover and children? Shaker. You have children? Yeah, we have two boys, two 21 more. and 24, Liam and Josh. That's nice. Um, so now you dated, I was reading that you dated uh, Linda Blair from The Exorcist. That's a lie. It's not true? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you put it in the book. <laughs> Just, you know. The cops around? <laughs> <laughs> well, because you were 25, and, I was she, 25 was and she was 15. That could make your head spin. Well, it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, isn't that illegal at the time? Was it legal then? It it's was the 70s, illegal. and it was not considered that big a deal. I mean, people said, kind of raised eyebrows, like, what the hell's going on? But <clears throat> now, I'm sure, with everybody, you know, th this there would be some, some issue about it. But uh, honestly, I've, I have friends who have daughters who date who 16 one was dating a 30 year old you know and it's not i'm not advocating you know if i had a daughter i'd be i'd be there at first with the oh, shotgun also. Oh, say. but i'm just saying there are relationships and there are th that aren't predatory you know my relationship with linda was absolutely not predatory it was mutual. I mean, we're still uh, she was older than me really up here i was mm -hmm. i've always been a bit of a um, a per perpetual adolescent, but you know, her mom really, I loved her mom, and mom really liked me, um, and we're still, we're friends to I this know, day. I know, but not to be rude, but isn't that considered statutory rape? Mm hmm Okay. Um, Can we move on now? <laughs> no, I mean... I mean, even if you say a girl about was 15 it. dating a 30-year-old guy now, he could go to jail for that. Yeah, yeah, so. but, but I think, I mean, it, there's a difference between, you know, it was a real relationship. I mean, I went to the... I, they, they saved me, really. I have, it was a, f a thing about her family. I, I oh. love connecting with her family because I'm a, a family person. I was over from Australia and was missing my family deeply. You know, nothing to happen with me. I was, I was really struggling as a musician. And you were immature and she was mature. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you know, she, it was, uh, you know, honestly, you know, she came on to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. but, I, but she was, she's a, an amazing person and and I, uh, like for my, uh, my birthday, we had fans, instead of buying me presents, send money to her dog rescue. And we had that in common. Okay. We're, we're passionate about dogs, All too. right, all right. You're off the hook. Um, 
<laughs> you know, it's, you, you, you attempted suicide <laughs> when you were 17 years old. Mm -hmm. That is astounding. I mean, you, you tried to hang yourself. I, I did hang myself. I just didn't... Uh... Uh, the rope came undone from I, I was very, I was into you know the whole I used to build guillotines and was a very 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 odd teenager puberty was not kind to me and I was um, and I was very adept at making hangman's nooses and and was very lonely and uh, and just hit a point where I, I wasn't good at school I wasn't popular at school I stayed home a lot I realized I was failing my first uh, public thing which was school you know being being in school and uh, and I had incredible self-loathing and one day I just did, I just wanted it to end and I went out and put a rope around my neck and tied it around the the beam of the shed uh, our backyard shed and kicked away this box that I was standing on and hung there for about 15 20 seconds and and the rope came undone the rope that I tied came undone not, so then not what the, did you do you just decided I to fell change to the your ground mind you change your mind uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a big rope burn around my neck, and and um, and felt truly felt like something had changed in me. And I'm not, you know, with, with all the teenage suicides now, what what I I my view was, you know, give it if you're feeling that, give it a a day or give it a week or give it another year, right. and because things will change. And I, I mean, look what I would have missed out on my life. Uh, your career, a career, my, all those my family, women loving my two you sons, on General Hospital, all those sex with Linda Blair, all, oh, all the sex that you had, <laughs> rock and roll. I'm I going mean. to hell. <laughs> and then, but this is interesting to me too. So at 17, we we'll have to take a break quickly, but we're going to come back. I want to hit on a couple other things, but at I bet you do. <laughs> I do. At 17, you try to kill yourself, and then at 23, you did something odd. More with Rick Springfield on the way. <laughs> Stacy. You didn't figure it out? You were lying next to her in your bed. What are you talking about? I called your apartment and Stacy answered the phone. No. I was in the kitchen. Oh, don't worry about it, Noah. I hung up before I said anything. Yeah. That's General Hospital's Dr. Noah Drake, played by my guest Rick Springfield. That we'll talk about that for a second. But I wanted to ask you: at 23, you you had some plastic surgery. So at 17, you tried to kill yourself, mm -hmm. and then at 23, you were into like looking better and feeling better. No, so it, what it, what happened between there? It was um, first of all after after hanging myself, I realized that uh, that I, that I was here for a reason, and the reason for, to me then was that pr that I had something. To offer, you know, to, to share, and it was, and I thought, I think it was music. Um, I went to America and and had a, and got into a band, had success, had hits in Amer had hits in Australia, and then went to America and had a hit in America, but got and caught. became as basically a pop superstar. A, well, a teen, a teen idol, you know, which honestly, I uh, I had one hit in the 70s, 1970 over here and then all the magazines started putting teen magazines started putting me in there because I was you know cute you're cute yeah, yeah and I was like the first Paris Hilton I mean I was famous for nothing because I go to I really I go to Disneyland and, and you know all these young girls would come up ask me to sign an autograph for me and I'm sure they had no idea what I did yeah they just recognized me from the magazine so I started you know my depression started talking to me I, I refer to him as a, as a, as a in the second person uh, as Mr. D Mr. And, D and and he, you know, was saying, you, I mean, I was quite a bit older. I was already 20, 23, 24 by this time, you know, and all the kids, all the other guys in Donny Osmond were 16, 17. I started, you know, worrying about thinking, oh, I, don't, I don't look young. You don't look young enough. You know, so I uh. stupidly went to Australia and, and looked at this, you know, plastic, Australian plastic surgeon with, you know, I had no bags, no lines, 23-year-old puffy young face and he said and said can you help me he said yeah i think i can fix those lines and oh, those bags boy. And so it was it was a very big mistake well now now you're um, you're still touring at your age which i i think you say it in here don't you your age yeah you're yeah, 61 I'm, now yes I am. and i always find it interesting that rockers and pop stars in their 60s are now going strong ringo star i think just turned 70 and the the rolling stones i just saw them in a concert last year they were fantastic they're up there now too mm -hmm. i mean how long do you think you'll go and do women still throw their underwear at you they do actually um and there's not a lot of training bras anymore which <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> good sign. Good yeah, sign. Yeah. Life is good. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, we, I, our show is very energetic. I have an amazing, um, powerful band, and we play the songs. You know, it's it's a rock and roll show, and people um, who who haven't been before are usually very surprised by the energy, and and the audience reacts to that too. So you just keep going. Well, I'll keep going until, Just you know. Just keep going. You're yeah. actually, you're so charming and lovely. Thank, <laughs> really nice and fun. Thanks for doing this. Thank okay, so his much. book is Late, Late at Night. Good night, everybody.